Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Here with some thoughts on the Sean Cox versus Dennis Lebedev fight. That's coming up at Cruiserweight. But before I continue, just remember the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, this fight is an optical illusion. I know Johan Hernandez is a cruiserweight champion right now. Some websites, BoxRec.com for example, considers him to be the best cruiserweight champion in the world. Now, his last loss was to a fighter named Wayne Brathwaite. It was a shocking loss because Joan Hernandez got knocked out. But of course, in Brathwaite's last fight, Brathwaite fight fought Sean Cox. And Sean Cox not only knocked out Brathwaite, he did it in the first round and knocked Brathwaite down several times before that fight was called. I'm not a believer in Sean Cox. I believe this is all an illusion. I believe that the winner of this fight will be Dennis Lebedev. My recommendation is that you take Lebedev to win this fight and straddle it against Sean Cox by KO. Let's talk about why. First of all, the Wayne Brathwaite that fought Sean Cox wasn't the same Wayne Brathwaite. It was the same guy, but a different fighter, right, who fought Johan Hernandez. For one, Brathwaite was fighting Cox at heavyweight, not cruiserweight like he fought Johan Hernandez. Secondly, Brathwaite had lost four of his preceding seven fights going into that fight, including losses against Mormack, who recently lost to Vladimir Klitschko, Steve Cunningham, Guillermo Jones, and Enzo Macarinelli. Now, it's true that at the time, these were elite fighters in the cruiserweight division. But it's clear that when Brathwaite steps up apart from the Johan Hernandez fight, he has problems. Let me also point out that Sean Cox isn't a cruiserweight. He's actually a heavyweight. And he's in his late 30s. So, as readers of my book, How to Bet on Boxing, know, I'm a skeptic anytime you get an older fighter who's actually losing weight to fight at a weight class he hasn't fought at against a guy who is naturally at that weight class. So I don't expect Sean Cox to have the same power at cruiser that he had at, at heavyweight when he beat Wayne Brathwaite. Not only that, style-wise, there are problems with Cox's style. In fact, I believe he not only is going to get beaten, I believe he's going to get stopped in this fight by Dennis Lebedev. Cox has too wide of a foot base. He doesn't move well. One of my rules is simply the wider a fighter's foot base, the less likely he is to be able to follow you around the ring. Also, Cox is a southpaw, right? But with him, it's all left hands, right? Lebedev is also a southpaw, but Cox really is heavily dependent, I would say too dependent, on his left hand. Also, let me point out too that it's all or nothing for Cox. Either Cox gets the knockout, 88% of his wins are by knockout, or Cox loses. Look on his record. He actually lost the decision by a wide margin. I don't see any evidence that Cox can, short of knocking a guy down several times in a fight, beat a guy by decision, by several rounds, by simply outboxing him. He doesn't have those skills. Not only that, 
while Lebedev went the distance against Marco Huck in a fight that I believe he got robbed in. Cox has not gone six rounds since 2009. This is a knockout puncher early in the fight. Now what happens when Cox, who's losing weight for this fight, suddenly finds himself in the later rounds against a guy with Dennis Lebedev's knockout power who is much slicker than Cox. I believe Cox will find himself in trouble. Right now let's talk about Lebedev's style. Lebedev is a slicker southpaw than Cox. Right? He has a pretty decent defense. He is able to maneuver himself around the ring such that he was able to get inside on Enzo Macarinelli, right? He busted up Enzo's eye. He didn't get frantic. He fights a controlled fight. In other words, in the Roy Jones fight, he's not swinging wildly on Jones. He's coolly stalking Jones around the ring. Very controlled performance. Powerful, but in control of the situation. Right? He's able to pinpoint punches. You'll notice it in the Enzo Macarinelli uh, tape. He's able to get punches between Macarinelli's guard. Right? He's much more accurate. He's much less of a free swinger than Sean Cox. And so, let me say this. I think what you have here is a slugger. Sean Cox trying to throw a home run punch at Dennis Lebedev in the first four rounds of this fight. If Cox is unable to take out Lebedev, don't be surprised if Cox either gets stopped or quits on his stool as Sonny Liston did in his first fight with Muhammad Ali. In fact, as Oscar De La Hoya did against Manny Pacquiao when he sensed what was coming after you know he expanded his energy right I'm expecting a stoppage at a minimum I'm expecting Lebedev to win the fight but I would caution that Cox is a puncher and has a puncher's chance you should straddle this with Cox by KO what I don't see happening is Cox outboxing Lebedev. Let's give Lebedev credit. He outboxed James Tony, right? This is a guy, granted it's an older James Tony, but Lebedev has boxing skills in addition to his power. I believe that gives him a decided advantage in this fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here. Online, visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.